is a very fine and distinguished first lady, amen, Dr. Shirley Durham, amen, and again to our first time visitors that are here uh, with us, uh, we're grateful uh, for your presence along with the faithful uh, that continue to support uh, this ministry week in and week out. I want to ask you to turn with us in your Bibles to the book of St. Mark, chapter number 5, and our reading will begin with verse number 1. St. Mark. Chapter 5 and uh, verse 1. And they came over unto the other side of the sea, into the country of Gardanus. And when he was come out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit who had his dwelling among the tombs, and no man could bind him, no, not with chains, because that he had been often bound with feathers and chains, and the chains had been plucked asunder by him, and the feathers broke into pieces, neither could any man tame him. And always, night and day, he was in the mountains and in the tombs crying and cutting himself with stones. But when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshipped him and cried with a loud voice and said, what have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou son of the most high God? I adjure thee by God that thou torment me not. For he said unto him, Come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. And he asked him, What is thy name? And he answered, saying, My name is Legion, for we are many. And he besought him much that he would not send them away out of the country. For the collection of these scriptures this morning, I want to talk to you from the subject, and I just want you to look at your neighbor and tell him, Deliverance is yours today. Oh, y'all didn't say that like you really believe it. He, 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 man, he, look at your other day. Maybe that didn't have any faith. And, and tell them that deliverance is yours today. Deliverance is yours today. And, and you don't have to leave here the same way you came. I, I, I don't care how much you pack in here with you. You can release it and let it go today. Amen. Because Jesus is in the house. For the only witnesses that know that he's in the house this morning. Amen. Father, we bless you and we thank you for being such an awesome God. And we pray even now, God, that as your word goes forth, that it goes forth with clarity and with understanding. We pray, God, for those that are battling in their bodies with COVID. Lord, those that are battling with other sicknesses and disease. All of the uncertainties and the evil that's going on, God, we place it in your hands as we lift it up to you. Because, God, we know that you're able to do anything but fail. Oh, yes. We bless you and we thank you for it all in Jesus' name. You, Amen. Yes. You may be seated. Amen. Deliverance Please. is yours today. You. Not tomorrow, but today. If you can believe it, you can receive it. 
when we look at that word deliverance, it, it simply means to be rescued from something. And, and now I, I, I don't know what's got you uh, all twisted up and tied up. Sometimes uh, the Bible calls it a stronghold. And a stronghold is simply a strong fault that, that, that you can't shake. But can I tell you that the blood of Jesus can erase and eradicate every thought, a, 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 a man, every moment of confusion, a, a, a man, every deliver, a, 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 everything that's got you sidetracked, that the blood of Jesus, a, a man, can set you free. Now, when we understand this word, deliverance, not only means that we're rescued from bondage, uh, but sometimes it means that we're rescued from danger. How many times have God delivered you when you you should have been dead, but 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 God somehow allowed that car to move over just enough, Amen, so that you uh, did not get hit. Oftentimes, when I was young and dumb, uh, you, 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 you know, I was in a situation where uh, there was a robbery going on, and uh, for some reason, uh, people have always thought I was in charge. Uh, even when I go on vacation, uh, and, and I'll be somewhere, and they say, Sarah, are you in charge here? And I said, no, I I don't even work here. <laughs> Amen. But, but, but the robber came in the back door. And I, I was in the office with the manager. And the robber said to me, pointing a gun at me, he said, uh, open the safe. And I looked at him with my young and dumb self. And I said, uh, you open it yourself. And, and, and he looked like, don't you see this gun? And, and so the manager said, uh, I'm the manager. Uh, because I, I just thought, you know, that it was one of his friends coming in playing. And, uh, and, and, and when he said that he was the manager, he says, you get on the floor. I said, yes, sir. <laughs> but, but it was God that helped me. When you, you, you know, when, 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 when I resisted him with that equalizer in his hand, and he, he just could have shot me and been through with it. But I, I'm so glad that God rescued me and, and didn't allow me a, a, a man to die at a young age like that. Now, when, when we look at God, God has a history of rescuing people. Uh, a, a man, because he rescued uh, his people from perilous uh, times uh, in the Old Testament, a, a man, he uh, focused on uh, removing those who was in the midst of trouble and danger. He, he rescued his people from their enemies. Uh, amen. He rescued them from the hands of wicked people. Uh, amen. He rescued them from the grave. Uh, amen. He rescued them from famine. Uh, amen. When everybody else was looking for food, uh, when God was pronouncing the plagues uh, on the Egyptians, uh, it didn't affect the children of Israel uh, because he's that kind of God. Uh, that, that, that it, it could be raining uh, on one side of the street and sunshine on the other. Uh, look at your neighbor and say, he's a bad God. Amen. Amen. And so when we really understand that the God is uh, an awesome God, uh, that in the new Testament, uh, when Jesus came down to 42 generations, uh, amen, uh, the, to, to deliver us, that God uh, is always the subject uh, and his people are always the object uh, of deliverance. Uh, now, in the Old Testament, we see temporary deliverance. Uh, but Jesus said that I am come uh, that you may have life and have it more abundantly. Uh, 
And so the deliverance that he gives you now is that he snatches you uh, out of the hand of the enemy. Uh, when our sentence uh, should have been uh, eternal damnation, but he said, not so. Uh, he said, I came uh, so that you can now have an opportunity to have eternal life. And so he delivers us because oftentimes uh, we are in a battle and oftentimes we think that it's a natural battle. But I, I want to remind you this morning that we're not fighting against flesh and blood, but we're fighting against principalities and powers. Uh, amen. But God said that I came to deliver you uh, from the eternal punishment of sin. Uh, and only Jesus can rescue you uh, from the wrath that comes. Uh, now in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 3, amen, uh, Paul talks about the work of the pastor is to help the church to grow spiritually and to mature in the Lord. Uh, now did you get that? He said, help. Uh, the pastor can't do all of the work. Of, uh, you got to come to the table uh, for your own self. Uh, amen. But there's always a meal uh, prepared for you. Uh, and so now this is done by a, a steady, balanced ministry of the Word of God. Uh, and so if we're going to grow in God, uh, we need the Word of God. In the book of Ephesians chapter 4, verses 1 through 6, it explains, uh, or 16, uh, how this is done, that it is necessary for each member of the body uh, to make his or her own contribution. Uh, God gives uh, spiritual gifts to his people, uh, and then he gives these gifts to people, to the various churches, to build up the saints. Uh, and so when God gives you a gift, uh, it's not for you uh, to show it off like a pretty little toy, but, but it's to help build up the body of Christ. Uh, amen. Uh, and when we understand, and, uh, amen, that we're building up the church, that as believers grow, uh, that's how the church is being built up. Uh, and so Paul will have more to say about these gifts uh, in, in 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 12 through 14. Uh, but this uh, should be said now that a mature Christian, uh, a, a man who uses his gifts and tools uh, to build uh, with while the immature believer uses theirs as toys and trophies. Now, many of the members of the Corinthian church, they enjoyed showing off their gifts, uh, but they were not interested in serving one another and edifying the church. Uh, well, what is ministry all about? Uh, well, it involves loving, feeding, and uh, discipling God's family so that the children can mature in the faith and become more like the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, ah, but I need to move on here uh, as we examine the text. Uh, amen. The writer, amen, lets us know that that there was a man that realized that, that he was in trouble. About, amen. That he was an outcast. Uh, Nobody wanted to be around him, uh, amen, because uh, they determined that his thinking had become uh, irrational, uh, that he wasn't thinking straight, he was out of control, uh, and when they couldn't uh, do anything with him, uh, they forced him uh, out of uh, the city. Uh, and now I don't know about you, but I don't like living uh, in a graveyard. Uh, but that's where they uh, put him in the graveyard uh, because uh, his behavior became erratic. Uh, amen. And, and, and you see, now, oh, now Jesus was on the other side, uh, but he was making his way uh, to where he was. Uh, and the Bible says that he sees him uh, afar off. Uh, it wasn't the man that cried out, uh, but it was uh, the, the, the evil spirit that was in him that cried out and said, why are you coming early to torment me? 
Because uh, you've got to understand that the spirits uh, need a body to live in. Uh, amen. And he was crying out and saying, Jesus, you are little early. But, now, that, that, that's the only time I've heard somebody say that God came early. But, amen. Because everybody else says, uh, you know, he, he said him late. But, 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 but he, he's never early. But he's always uh, on time. But, but but don't you know uh, that that when when God's getting ready, Amen, to deliver you, uh, the enemy's gonna always say uh, you came too early. But, because the Bible says that the enemy wants to kill, steal, uh, and uh, to destroy. And uh, but picture with me uh, for just a moment uh, in your biblical imagination uh, the despair that this man must have felt uh, the, that he was in. A hopeless situation uh, that he, he couldn't sleep because uh, man those evil spirits of the uh, he man was making him cut himself. Uh, now you know if you're in your right mind, uh, you're not gonna cut yourself. Uh, and they say, wait a minute, uh, this man is out of control. Uh, the, and so the Bible says uh, that they put chains on him. Uh, the, a, a man thinking that we need to tame him because there's nothing. Uh, we could do with him, uh, but don't you know uh, that that he broke those chains of the uh, amen, not him, uh, but the evil spirit that was in him. But uh, now you know it's not natural to dwell among the dead. Uh, but, but but here he was uh, the, with this unclean spirit. Uh, the, amen. Uh, this man who was dwelling uh, among the tombs. Uh, because no one could bind him, uh, not even the chains. Uh, because he had been bound uh, and shackled with chains. Uh, but every time, uh, amen, uh, he, he would break those chains uh, and those spirits, uh, amen, would cause him uh, to act unseemly. The, the, but he was crying out in his despair the, because he said, my situation looks hopeless. Uh, the, ah, but he began to call on Jesus. Uh, amen. Jesus said, duh, duh. Amen. That he said, now the devil told him, now why have you come here? Amen. And uh, the devil asked uh, God, uh, what is your name? Uh, amen. And the reason why there was a superstition uh, of that day uh, the, that they believed uh, that if you call them by, by name, uh, you could conquer, amen, uh, your enemy. Uh, and so here comes Legion uh, calling out and saying, uh, Jesus, uh, Son of God, uh, what is your name? Uh, and he said, I'm Jesus. Uh, amen. And here it is. Uh, but but Jesus flips the script uh, and said, Legion, um, uh, what is your name? Uh, well, in the, the Roman army, the, a legion uh, was up to 6,000 uh, men. Uh, I'm not suggesting uh, that there were 6,000 uh, demons in him, uh, amen, but there were many. Uh, but you see, the, he had an encounter the, with the one uh, who was able to uh, to set him free uh, when everything else failed. Uh, uh, now, if you look at a uh, man, the Jewish law, the uh, uh, man, uh, these men were outcasts. Be be because uh, under the Jewish law, you could not uh, touch anything that was dead. Uh, because if you did, then you were defiled. Uh, well, can you imagine uh, laying and living among the dead? Uh, those things that are defiled, uh, those things that are decaying, uh, and yet you're laying there and living there like everything is all right. Uh, well, in some of our minds, uh, that's where we are. Uh, but I want to tell you today uh, that your deliverance, uh, amen, is here. 
today. Uh, like this man, uh, he called on the God Almighty. Uh, let me tell you what the enemy will have you doing. Uh, he'll have you cutting up yourself. Uh, amen. Uh, he'll have you swatting yourself all up. Uh, cuts everywhere. Uh, shooting up. Uh, drinking up. Uh, doing everything to destroy. Uh, amen. The temple of God. Uh, but this man cried out to Jesus. Uh, amen. And you know what I don't understand? Uh, amen. Now nobody was afraid of him uh, while he was crazy and out of his right mind. Uh, but but the story says that when Jesus, uh, amen, uh, healed and cast the demons out of him, uh, all of a sudden, man, everybody was afraid uh, because uh, he was sitting up in his right mind uh, and he was fully clothed. Uh, oh, somebody need to get that fully clothed. Uh, he wasn't out of half naked. Uh, I may have to submit to you. Uh, maybe you're not in your right mind. Uh, amen. Uh, but the Bible says that when Jesus got through, the, the, after Jesus told those demons, uh, you got to go. Uh, and now here come the demons uh, trying to bargain with Jesus. Uh, they said, please. Uh, and, and you know what? We know on the final day of judgment, uh, that we're going uh, to be changed forever. Uh, but it's not that time. Uh, beat us uh, to go into the pigs. Uh, beat us uh, to go into the swine. Uh, and Jesus said, okay. Uh, and the Bible said, the minute uh, that he casted them out, they went into the swine. Uh, said it was over 2,000 uh, 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 pigs that just ran off the cliff uh, and ran into the ocean and died. Uh, well, let me tell you that demons need a body to live. Yes, right. Amen. And, 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 and so they, they knew uh, amen, that, that, that Jesus had the power to, to cast them out. To, to, they knew that there was something about Jesus. They recognized God uh, when the religious leaders uh, were so blind and caught up in themselves that they didn't recognize uh, that you're standing in the midst of greatness. Uh, you're standing uh, in the midst of God manifested in the flesh. Uh, but Jesus said, I came uh, for this reason, uh, to deliver you, uh, to set you free. Uh, uh, and so I don't care what mind tricks uh, the enemy trying to play, uh, but I heard the word of God say, uh, no weapon uh, formed against me uh, shall be able to prosper. Uh, you got to make it up in your mind and, uh, that I am going to be delivered. Uh, uh, no sickness of God can take you out uh, except God allows of God because the 39 stripes uh, represents the 39 categories uh, of sickness and disease. Uh, and Jesus said, I died uh, for every category. And so here it is. Uh, this man comes to Jesus uh, and Jesus delivers him. Uh, imagine with me uh, in your mind uh, that, that while he was crying out and cutting himself, um, uh, amen, that was a constant scream. Uh, you know, they can hear him in the city uh, because now he, he's cutting himself uh, but, but he can't help himself. Uh, oh, you know anybody like that? They say, I want to stop uh, but I can't stop. And so here it is. And you say, I don't know why you don't stop. Well, if it was that simple, I could do it myself. But I'm crying out, Jesus, save me. Jesus, deliver me. Jesus, set me free. So here it is. He's crying out. Uh, and, and then that old enemy said, Now, what's your uh, 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 son of the most high God? Uh, what do you have to do with us? Uh, and then they asked Jesus again, What's your name? Uh, amen. Because, uh, amen, they were trying to counter Jesus. Uh, but they thought that they were going to flip Jesus. Uh, can you imagine that? They thought that they were going to flip the one. Uh, 
who created them. Uh, he, 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 man, who created everything. Uh, but, but he let them know real quick, uh, he, 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 man, that, that even though your name is Legion, uh, you're no match for the God of the universe. Uh, and I want to tell somebody today, I, I don't care what the enemy is whispering in your ear. Uh, he's no match uh, for the deliverance uh, that can only come from God. Uh, all God needs is a willing vessel. Uh, I, I don't care about the generational curses. Uh, they can be destroyed today. God, uh, I don't care about the addictions. Uh, they could be destroyed today. God, uh, you may have uh, a little sugar in your tank, uh, but you can be delivered today. God, uh, amen. Uh, you may have, uh, uh, amen, a little glue on your fingers. Uh, God, ah, uh, but you can be delivered today. Uh, you may be a pathological liar and a prevaricator, uh, but you can be delivered today. Yeah. You may be working with the box squad, uh, but you can be delivered today. Uh, I don't care what it is. Uh, there's nothing that God can't deliver you from. Uh, in every insecurity, uh, amen, it's a trick of the enemy. Uh, because when God created you, uh, he said he made you beautiful, uh, amen, and wonderful. Uh, you were created in his image uh, and in his likeness. Uh, don't let nobody tell you uh, that you're second class. Uh, don't let nobody tell you uh, you'll never amount to anything. Uh, because I heard it say, greater is he uh, that is in us than he that's in the world. Oh, you got to understand. Uh, the, remember, demons were begging. Uh, do not send us out of the country. Uh, amen. They were begging. And, and, and even though they were evil, God still had mercy. Uh, if God had mercy on them, uh, what about you and I? Uh, and so don't let the enemy tell you that God won't work with you. Uh, but there's got to be a willing Hard on your part. Uh, he, he, man, see, the swine uh, or the pig, uh, he, man, was an unclean animal to the Jews. Uh, he, he, man, and, and so th th there was no problem with them going to the pigs because they were not supposed to eat pig. And I said supposed to because I know something. One of them said, I, I just love that bacon. <laughs> Amen. Well, so Jesus gave them the permission. Uh, amen. And, and, and now here's the man sitting there. The, amen. The man came in a restful state. Amen. And it was a strong contrast from the former restless agitated man that he was. Uh, don't you know that when Jesus comes into your life uh, there is a noticeable change? Uh, because now you transition from darkness into light. The Bible says that he was in his right mind that he was no longer under the frenzied screaming controlling of the demons. He, 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 man, uh, those who saw him uh, uh, you know about the swine and uh, they refer to both uh, 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 man, the pig, uh, man, and the man. And they, and they said, you know, uh, how do these two tie in together? But, but, but see, the demon just needs a body. He doesn't care who it is, just as long as it's a warm body. He, man, because he can't do anything with a dead body. He needs a live body. Right. He, he, man, and, and so they, they wanted the people to know what had happened uh, to the man and the pigs uh, and the relationship between uh, the two events. Well, when, when he pleaded with him to depart from their region, uh, amen, the residents became frightened and resentful towards Jesus. They said, what kind of man is this that's got that kind of power? Well, let me tell you today, you don't have to be afraid. Jesus comes in love. Amen. Jesus comes to set you free from the bondage of sin. See, it, it doesn't matter how much money you acquire in this life. How many houses, how many cars. 
How many material things? If your life is not right with God, you're still empty. Amen. Inwardly. In our Bible reading this week, when Jesus was on trial, Pilate asked him, uh, you, you know, aren't you going to fight? And where are your people? And he said, my kingdom is not of this world. He said, if my kingdom was, he said, then they would be out here fighting. But my kingdom is above. Right. And, and, and so that's why the writer Paul could, could tell us that we're not fighting against flesh and blood. Right. We're trying to fight people with your fist and with your words. Uh, amen. This is not a natural fight. Right. It's a spiritual fight. Jesus wants to deliver and to set you free today. Now, 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 Jesus was referring to himself as God being in control of both nature and the supernatural. That's why Jesus is called the Son of God and the Son of Man. Now, because one depicts him uh, as human uh, and the other depicts him uh, as divine. And, uh, it blew their mind because uh, all they could see was a man in flesh and blood. Uh, but John 4 and 24 says that God is a spirit and they that worship him uh, must worship him in spirit and in truth. And so this man left there delivered. He left there in his right mind, clothed, the Bible says, sitting up at peace with God and at peace with himself. No longer did he need the chains and the shackles. No longer uh, was he uh, laying uh, in the cave that they had carved out in the graveyard for him. Well, you, you, you know, Jesus wants to do the same thing for you, that he, he wants to give you that deliverance. Now, uh, but you must have the desire. Right. You have to want to be delivered because God will never force himself on you. Uh, and, 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 you know, sometimes people say, well, you know, I want God, but I, I don't want to give up the world. Well, you have to make a choice. Right. You have to decide. Because the Bible says no man can serve two masters. He will love one and hate the other, but you can't be straddled the fence. You got to make up your mind. He, 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 he meant that, that, that for Jesus I live and for Jesus I die. He, he, he meant that I'm going to confess Jesus as my Lord and my Savior. Now when Jesus cast it out the legions. He demonstrated his authority over evil spirits. Right. He, he, man, there was no question about it from that point on uh, that he had the power. Mm -hmm. Now, when his disciples seen him uh, and he rebuked the winds, uh, he, he, man, on the sea, they said, what kind of man is this? It was the same Jesus. The Bible says that he did so many miracles that there's not enough books to contain everything that he did. And that was in a short span of three and a half years. Because at 33, he was crucified. 33. His ministry started at 30. You, 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 you know, and, and, and so today... As I prepare to close, I, I simply want to tell you that that those bystanders that was watching, they, they, they couldn't figure out what had happened, but they knew something happened. But today, you don't have to be a bystander. This same deliverance that Jesus delivered this man that was in torment in his mind, in his body, Walking around with no clothes on. He meant cutting himself up. Oftentimes we, in, in, in our counseling, oftentimes we talk with people that, that 
they can't get past things in their mind. And maybe that's you today. You've been hurt and you don't know how to let it go. You've been lied on. And some people say one thing I can't stand is a lie. They lied on Jesus. They rejected him. They called him a devil when he was God himself. And so it, it, it doesn't matter where you are. They said this man was crazy. But when he got Jesus, his mind was restored. And so today, if that's you, all the things that you've been going through, you, you've lost all the things that you thought were important to you. Maybe God is just trying to get your attention. Because what you lost, he can restore a hundredfold. But all he wants you to do is give the life and your heart to him. Just like in this beggar who earnestly wanted to be delivered. He had a desire in him. And sometimes we go year after year struggling. Because sometimes we are afraid of what people are going to think about us. How they're going to look at us. But let me tell you, peace of mind is more important than what people think or say about you. Oftentimes we have people come and they says, I'm a member of a church, but I don't want them to look at me differently. Well, God doesn't look at you differently because of your struggle. Because he's not focusing on the struggle. He's focusing on the promise that he made to you. That if you'll give it to him, that he'll deliver you. And, and today, if that's you, You've got a battle that you've been struggling with. It seems like nobody understands, nobody cares. And, and you come and you put your church face on. You, you know how we do it. Praise the Lord. The Lord is good. And then we get in the car and we break out in tears. And we say, if they only knew what I'm going through. Can I tell you that you can be delivered today? You can be set free. Doesn't matter what it is. It's your day and your opportunity to be delivered. But remember, it starts out with a desire. Do you want to be set free? If that's you today, I want to invite you to come down this aisle. And allow the blood of Jesus, these prayer warriors, to pray with you for God to do a supernatural thing in your life. One writer said, is there anything too hard for God? I want to answer that for you today, that there's nothing too hard for God. The Bible tells us in the book, the revelation that God is knocking at the door of your heart and he wants to come in but you've got to let him in he, he, he's not going to force himself on you amen but, but he's here and he wants to feel that void in your life it doesn't matter what it is it's your day it, it's your opportunity to be set free, to be delivered, he, 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 he's mad to give God an expected end in your life. It doesn't matter what it is. Nothing's too hard for God. Nothing's too hard for God. Nothing is too hard for God. Give it to him. Give it to him. 
while God is moving, while the Spirit of God is ministering, allow Him to destroy every yoke, every hurt, every disappointment. It's your day. Oh, it's your opportunity for God to do something super natural in your life. Your day. Come on, give it to him. Come on, give it to him. Let him work it out. Allow him to turn it around. Let God restore the Let God 